What up, Mads Leeds? Whoop, whoop. All right, let's do this. Uh, we're in 12.2 transformations of quadratic functions. And the learning target is, I will identify the effects of transformations on quadratic functions. I will identify the effects of transformations on quad on quadratic functions. Barely fit it. Functions. Boom. I will identify the effects of transformations on quadratic functions. We're going to introduce today vertex form, which is simply just a quadratic function in the form of f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And before we talk too much about it, it's actually cool because it has your vertex right in it. We'll talk about that later, though. Uh, for right now, it's just a cool form. We're going to go over each individual piece, a, h, a. Okay, so if I'm looking at the graph of g of x equals x squared plus k, it's the graph of the parent function f of x equals x squared. That's your parent function, right? That's just the starter function. And it's translated vertically k units. So this k right here is a vertical translation. It either goes up or down. And here's how you know. If k is greater than 0, graph up. If our k is less than 0, so if it's negative, graph down. That's the magic. Okay? So again, adding that k on the outside here is a vertical translation, and it's either going to be positive or negative. Positive goes up, negative moves the whole graph down. When I say goes up and goes down, I mean we have this graph, f of x equals x squared, and it's going to either move it up, the whole graph, or down. Okay? Now we want to talk about this inside. So that's just this outside portion we're talking about. Now I want to talk about the x minus h squared portion of it. So the graph of g of x equals x minus h squared is again the graph of the parent function f of x equals x squared, but translated horizontally h units. Now, k and h, here's the difference. k is kind of like, you got that friend, you ever have that friend that you really understand? Everything they say, you're like, oh, it's totally clear, I get it, that's k. k is simple. k is like up is up, down is down. h is that friend you have to go back to and be like, what did you just say? And you have to question it because uh, anything in the form of x minus h is actually going to move to the right and x plus h is going to move to the left. And we have that written right there, right here. The minus sign flips this impact h has on the translation. So x minus any number squared shifts right and x plus any number squared shifts left. So in other words, if I have x minus 3 squared g of x equals, sorry, that moves three units right. Whereas if I had g of x equals x plus 3 squared, that moves three units left. Okay? It's the hardest part of this whole thing. You gotta wrap your head around K is telling you exactly what to do, and H is really telling you the opposite thing to do. So for example, let's look at a K example. The graph of G of X squared plus five. Again, that's on the outside, right? No parentheses. Therefore, that's an up and up or down translation, and that is a translation of the parent function five units up. Whereas down here now we see parentheses and it's minus one. So that is a translation of the parent function, one unit right. Now let's really get challenging here. Take a minute, pause this, see if you can figure out this one. It's going to be six units, either left or right, and three units, either up or down. Choose what it is. I'm assuming you've done it, so let's look. The six is on the inside, that's left or right, but that's a positive, so I know I'm going to go left. 
and I have a positive out here, which this is K, it speaks its mind plainly, so we're going up, three units up. All right. Now we're going to talk about horizontal and vertical dilations. We're going to start with vertical. All right, I went and got my friend Edna right here. Edna's going to help us with these dilations. You kind of notice that her face makes a nice little parabola right there. If you just look at it and kind of ignore it, everything in between. Edna's the unsung hero of the movie, by the way, just so you all know. Edna's my jam. But anyway, let's look right here what it says. We're talking about dilations. It says g of x equals ax squared is the graph of f of x equals x squared stretched or compressed vertically by a factor of a. So if a is greater than 1, that means we have like 2x squared, 3x squared, something greater than 1. The graph is stretched vertically away from the x-axis. What do I mean? See this parabola? If I stretch it vertically, notice where it's kind of normal shape right here. I'm point right, right there. But I'm going to stretch it vertically away from the x-axis. So the x-axis is like this bar on the camera right here. I'm going to stretch away from that. Notice, does that, gra does that parabola get thinner or fatter? It gets clearly thinner. So when we have a vertical stretch, if I have the parent function, let me get some color coding here. Oh, I'm going to use that. I'm going to use blue. So if we have our normal graph of x squared right here, boom, boom, that's x squared. A vertical stretch is going to make it thinner. It's going to thin it out. It's going to stretch it up. It's going to pull it up away from the x-axis to make it thinner or narrower. If the number is a fraction, in other words, if absolute value of A is between 0 and 1, the reason we do absolute value is because it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive, it just has to be a fraction or a decimal, then the graph is compressed vertically. Towards the x-axis. And what does that do? Well, let's look. Now I'm going to push towards that little bar down there, the bottom of your view of me. I push it, notice what happens to his face? It spreads out. It gets fatter. So what's happening? That vertical compression is widening the graph. Okay? All right, now let's talk about stretching or the horizontal dilation, which we're not going to do a ton with, but a little bit. You just got to know it. 